guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Right now the dyno schedule is so full I can't get on the dyno to test anything. But that doesn't mean I'm going to sit idly by and do nothing. That's not how I roll. I'm going to take this opportunity to tear into the little L99 4.3 liter Gen 2 LT1 based V8. That's right, a lot of guys don't even realize 4.3 liter V8 or that they took that tiny little motor and installed it in the giant size Caprice. What I want to do is tear into the motor and find out if there's a problem. Last time we ran the motor, I started to lose oil pressure. I expect there to be issues. What I want to find out is if we can save the crank and rods. I want to take those out, combine those with a 5.7 liter block and piston and create a Gen 2 DZ302. So what do you say? Let's tear into the L99 and see if we can save the crank. That was nice. Yep, one hand on the camera. Trying to get stuff done. Not a good idea. Don't mind me, Troy, just, you know, slinging oil all over the place. No, I'm good. Just mostly on me and the ground and stuff. You know how we do it. You need help? No. I was just dumb enough to try to hold the camera and do the oil. And put the pan in the wrong spot. You know, totally awesome. You know how I do it. Yeah, that's nice. Excellent. Okay guys, this is not what we wanted to see when we pulled the pan. Check out all the debris. There's a lot of stuff going on here. This is not what we wanted to see and it doesn't bode well for the bearings or the crankshaft. Before checking the bearings, we need to remove the factory windage tray. The 
The pinch nuts fight you every step of the way. I like the fact that this Gen 2 motor had a factory windage tray for oil control. Now it wasn't the full length like the LS, but it's much better than not having anything at all. Now we can start by pulling a couple rod caps and then the main caps and check the bearings. Got a bunch of debris and low oil pressure, so that's not good, right? No, 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 definitely not good. Those things are probably biting already, or does it? I it still it's turns. Not because of the oil. Yeah, it just it still spins. Okay. It's got some. That's got some crap. That's got some contamination in her. Yeah. We look at a couple of rod bearings, so now it's time to check the main bearings. First one checked out okay. Number two, not so much. When the bearing's stuck and you can't get it out, that's not a good sign. There we go. There's the bad one. Yep, pretty toasty. Yep, that crankshaft is not happy. Let's check the other ones and see. This one was stuck too, not a good sign. Oh yeah, I got another one. Yeah, that's not good. Another bad one. So let's see if the last one's bad. Yeah, not ideal, but so that crank is no good. Well, the bad news is it looks like I'm going to need another crank and rods for the 4.3 liter V8, but on the plus side, I get to take another trip to the junkyard. Okay guys, as you saw from the many photos and video, I was not able to save the crank or menu the connecting rods. That dark color blue on the connecting rods tells me that they got really, really hot and I don't want to reuse them. In fact, it's just much easier for me to throw the whole thing away. I know I could turn the crank, but I'm going to go to the wrecking yard, get another 4.3 liter L99 and start over. I'm going to take those internals out, 
combine them with the block and pistons for the 5.7 liter LT1, thereby creating a Gen 2 DZ302. But the only way that I can do that is if you guys like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.